Hello and welcome to the Friday edition of the Met Day Brief. To come over the next 60 minutes, 400 personnel and nine commanders to all 10 regions of the country ahead of the Supreme Court's verdict. Multi TV's 2013 Habitat Fair opens today with emphasis on proper wiring and energy conservation, where we'll take you live to the fairgrounds. National Chairman of the NDC reviews the winner takes all culture in the country's politics, calling for the sharing of power. Well, my name is Kamini Nyamani Amano. When I return, I'll bring you details of these stories and plenty more. Now, first story, ahead of the Supreme Court verdict, the Ghana Police Service has deployed 400 personnel and nine commanders to all 10 regions of the country as part of efforts to maintain peace and security. Some of the senior officers who have been addressing the press on the deployment uh, have been speaking with us. That are going to go in this which we have determined as flashpoints. And these flashpoints are very dynamic. So we send these people there now, but before the vet is given, we have to organize some people to other areas which our intelligence will tell us are looming flashpoints. So this is what I will tell you about flashpoints. We know that they are flashpoints. We prepare towards them, and most of our people being deployed today from the foreign police units are going to support the local police in policing these flashpoints and hotspots. So there are forces around. If you listen to me well, as we mentioned, cadets at the college will come and be middle uh, supervisors. We have a lot of other resources around which are going to tap. There are a lot of people in the offices who are also going to be tapped. And all of us will be on the field. For that day, the 30,000 strong Ghana police service will all be involved in this exercise. Sir, please, let's talk about equipment. Are they well positioned to take care of any event? Oh, yes, equipment, we are well positioned. I've asked the field to come and you know, parry some of the equipment. We have modern equipment which every, any police service in the world can boast of. And that's why we did a lot of training that the IGP and myself have to go around the whole country to ensure that the men on the ground are married to their weapons because every equipment has its own psychology, the way it operates. So no matter what, just take it and say, go ahead, as if you are sharing granules, go ahead, just come and take. No, 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 no. You have to turn on them and turn on them and turn them. And be well organized and know the psychic of the weapon you are holding. You must be married to your, your weapon. If you're a woman, she should be your husband. If you're a man, she should be your wife. That's, the sense of training. So a weapon should be very handy and must know it inside out. You can assemble it with your eyes closed, you must be able to assemble your weapon. And we have a special time with you which you must be able to do that. I also do the best work that is needed. And my plea is to give them also your best cooperation so that this exercise go on to its best as we are expecting. Thank you. Right, and joining us by telephone is Emmanuel Bomban, the Executive Director for WANEP. Uh, good afternoon, sir. To you and good afternoon to your viewers. Uh, absolutely. Now, th this display from the police uh, and their deployment to uh, various parts of the country, for many, has become frightening with, with the so sort of visibility we now have from the police. Uh, but we also know the essence of, of this exercise. What do you make of the kind of response we are having from the public? But thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, the general public, we have to appreciate that this deployment is consistent with what we have been seeing over the past few weeks. We've seen the level of preparedness demonstrated by physical exercises, use of weapon systems, engaging in anti-rioting uh, training exercises. Mm. But then that has been followed up with the assurances of the hierarchy of the police service led by the Inspector General of Police himself. And if you put all that together, uh, you would 
understand that in order to provide the backup to the existing units across the country, such a deployment would happen. Now, I think what we should appreciate as the public is that two things must happen. Mm. We must continue to talk peace. We must persuade one another that Ghana is the only country we have, and we must at all costs ensure that immediately after the Supreme Court verdict, we, we sustain the peace that we have. But at the same time, we, though it is unlikely, we must encourage the police that in the event that anything would happen, they shouldn't tell us that they were not ready. They shouldn't tell us that they do not have enough men and women in strategic places. So that if you therefore understand that, it is not enough to assure us verbally, but they need to translate that assurance into concrete deployable actions, we should see the deployment as part of their role and appreciate it for our safety and protection across the nation. Right. Now, uh, uh, how about our border towns? How important would it be at this point to secure or, or tighten security at our border towns? Uh, if, you, if you look at our border towns, uh, we do not see any threat that is likely going to disturb the peace as a result of any activities that could be ongoing in uh, neighboring states. And to that extent, the border towns could be included into other towns and cities across the country. And the same anxiety that might be prevalent in other towns and cities could be the same anxiety uh, in border towns, except where the police would have mapped out and identified a particular flashpoint area. But normally, that type of information is not shared with the public because they would see it as uh, intelligence information. Otherwise, from the type of observ observation that we do, uh, there is no particular threat that is peculiar to border towns versus towns that are in the interior. Right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Emmanuel. Emmanuel Bombande is the executive director of WANEP. Uh, but we're trying to get uh, DSP Safazatha to also tell us exactly what the police plan is for some of our border towns. Uh, let's move on to some other stories. And we understand that the second deputy speaker of parliament and MPP stalwart, Professor Michael Kwesas, the electoral terrain of the country will no longer be the same after the Supreme Court's verdict no matter how it goes now this he says will ha will have once more shown the capacity of the dankwa buzia dumbo tradition to dissect the most complicated electoral intrigues he was speaking at a lecture to commemorate the 21st anniversary celebration of the party here in accra part of the 21st anniversary lecture of the MPP was aimed at educating party members, especially the youth, about the history of the party, as well as clearing misconceptions. Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Professor Michael Quay, who delivered the speech, noted that even though Ghanaians still await the Supreme Court's verdict, it was certain the unprecedented ruling will transform Ghana's democracy. The electoral processes and horizon will never be the same again. So far as we are concerned, we are the Democrats. We are the liberals. We are the believers of fundamental human rights and the rule of law. And we have the capacity to enhance the frontiers of opportunities in development. He also denied attempts by the then Dankwa Buzia party to overthrow such a food doctor, Kwame Nkrumah. The truth of the matter was that Nkrumah wanted all power for himself. And there came a time when there was a big fight between the old guards and the socialist boys. Many who are old enough will remember those days. They were fighting themselves. And that is what led to that, that plan that ultimately led, led to that problem. In short, we are not 
not draw us. He also tagged on other issues relevant to the new Patriotic Party. The theme for the lecture was the new Patriotic Party and the Dankwa Buzia Dombo tradition's contribution to the establishment and deepening of the democratic culture and practice in Ghana. NDC Chairman Dr. Kwabune J has added to calls for the country to consider reviewing the winner-takes-all democratic culture in favor of power sharing. He was speaking at the flag-raising ceremony to commemorate the 21st anniversary of the rival NPP at the party headquarters in Accra. Now, the NDC Chairman said the culture is at the heart of the tension that threatens the country's democracy. He called on all political parties to join hands in fighting against the winner-takes-all system and opt for power sharing, strengthening the unity and democracy in the country. He says the winner-takes-all attitude is a factor to the political tension in the country. He made a statement at the flag-raising ceremony of the 21st anniversary of the NPP in Accra. Kwabneje asked all political parties to join hands to change the governance concept in order to strengthen the unity and democracy in Ghana. I think that something that makes us insecure is the fact that usually the winner takes it all. Now from now, don't let the winner take it all. Let us share. This country belongs to all of us. Change. What I've seen is that no king lasts forever. The people will be fed up one day. So let us be patient. Us the NPP's Deputy Communications Director, Yao Boabing, is however not in favor of the proposal, arguing that the timing is wrong. Right, we are all working for Ghana. We are working for Ghana in opposition or otherwise. Where were these calls when we went to uh, start the petition? How do we start calls like that one week to a decision? That is not an option the constitution provides for. The constitution we have says that you have a majoritarian government. You have an executive presidency who is elected on a 50 plus one. You also have a majoritarian parliament which works with the president. There are difficulties at local level. I would prefer that we compete all the way down to local level where the parties can then engage because the so-called winner takes all syndrome will be broken up. I don't think now is the time to say that anybody who is the victor in the upcoming election petition should consider sharing cabinet with other people. We are not structured for that. Dr. Kwabneje earlier also called on leaders of all the political parties to leave a legacy of peace by planting a seed of peace in the grassroots supporters of their parties. Uh, so joining us is Dr. Ali Lusaydu. He's a senior lecturer at the Political Science Department of the University of Ghana. Let's uh, find his thoughts on how helpful this could be. Hello, Doc. Hello. Dr. Saydu. Hello. Can you hear me, please? I, I, I can barely hear you if you could speak up a little. Can you hear me now? Is it better? Well, Doc, Dr. Saydu, throughout the proceedings, one of the major things that we hope to change is our winner-takes-all culture. Now, Dr. Kwabneje, who is NDC chairman, has called for, he's added his voice to this so that, you know, we, we change the, the, the kind of culture we have as far as our, our democratic system is concerned. What difference will this make? Yeah, I think, first of all, we have all agreed as Ghanaian, Oscar scientists, Oscar practitioners, analysts, that the winner-takes-all system is the bane of our politics current. And there is a need for us to overcome this particular problem. But however, there is no consensus on how we are going to overcome it. I think I agree with the uh, MPP General Secretary that we run in our constitution, the very design of our constitution allows for a what? A majoritarian government where the executive is more powerful than all the other what is it, organs of the state. So this literally makes it very difficult for us to step out. I think there is difference between unity government or power sharing and then an all-inclusive government. We, when we are advocating for an all-inclusive government, it means that a government who has won power has the, the, the advantage to select from the pool of resources that we have across the country, notwithstanding the political divide, notwithstanding the ethnic background, notwithstanding the regional background of that particular person. 
if that is what we are advocating, that will be a good thing for Ghana. We all need an all inclusive government whereby competent people regarding sorry, just regarding their political activities can serve the government. But when we are talking about unity government or power sharing, that is quite different. In unity government or power sharing, there is an indication that our democratic governance system has failed, which is not true. And our constitution has allowed us to one party, the winning party, to dominate. It says that majority of ministers must be selected from the party, which is to say ministers of the party from the parliament and several other things. So our the very design of our constitution makes an all unity government or power sharing government very difficult. And even realities across Africa, especially in Kenya and Zimbabwe, has indicated that it is not a very good practice at all because of the differences in the ideology of the political party sharing power, because of personality crash, like Hollywood, because of satisfaction of different constituencies and several other loopholes. So I think it is very difficult now for us to be advocating for a unity government when our democratic governance system is still thriving. It is fully necessary where it has failed. But I will forever argue for an all inclusive government whereby political parties that have won power can draw from all the pools of votes that we have in the country, irrespective of their political values. Right, Dr. Saidu, in, in times past, uh, th there have been calls for or suggestions that we practice selective electoral process. You, 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 do you feel this is the right time to probably uh, put that to test? Did you say selective? A, a selective electoral process. So it, it perhaps it isn't everybody's vote that is able to elect uh, you know, people in office. Yeah, I think to be able to, to move beyond the winner takes all system, I think there is a lot of reforms that we have to do. First of all, it has to do with what is it, amending some aspects of our constitution that will allow the type of what the electoral process that we do. Now we use the majority system, simple pass the vote, 50 plus one, and then you are elected as the executive. And that one gives that particular winning candidate the authority to select appoint people that he wants to work with, appoint people who are members of the party and who have suffered and also contributed in the victory of that particular party. So the first point to start is to look at the, the manner in which we elect our politicians in this particular country, the executive officers. When we are able to change it, then create the room for, for other people to participate with alongside the winning government, then that is going to be easy. But as it stands now, so the manner in which we vote and some provisions of the constitution will make it very difficult for us to practice any other system other than the winner takes all. Right, uh, Dr. Seydou, beyond beyond August 29, what do you feel that, uh, as a you know, as a country, we should have picked from those proceedings? Yeah, I think the, 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 this particular electoral system is going to bring a lot of benefits to the country in the sense that. I don't think after August 29, no matter which political party emerges as the victor or the vanquish, our electoral process is going to be the same. I think it is going to bring about the necessary reform, especially in our electoral management body in this particular country. It is going to lead to a lot of reform in those particular bodies. It is going to lead to a, a lot of reform in several other aspects and the way in which we conduct our politics. And I think as we, we reflect over, what will come on the night. We should also think of the ways in which we are going to implement reform after the night. It is not just about the one particular candidate being declared a winner. This victory that will come on the night is going to be a victory for democracy in Ghana because it is going to be to a lot of reform in our right. institutional politics and the way we see politics in this particular country. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Seydu. Dr. Ali Seydu, a senior political science lecturer at the University of Ghana. Uh, let's quickly uh, move on to some other stories, but staying around the Supreme Court judgment. Now, it, it, the Supreme Court has said it will only allow four groups of people in the courtroom during the day of judgment on the election petition case, which falls on August 29. These groups include parties involved in the petition, members of the bar, the media, and representatives of of the security agencies. A statement issued by the Judicial Secretary Justice Alex Pokui Champon said 
only those in the above mentioned categories will be accredited. The AC said is taken to ensure that security at the court premises and inside the courtroom is not compromised. Well, as the August 29 approaches, a growing anxiety is brewing among Ghanaians. Will all nine judges rule in favor of a party to the case take that decision rule concerns that the court's decision, uh, whichever way it goes, would be met with widespread socially disruptive behavior, have elicited a chorus of peace messages from civil society. Now, so how will the judges rule on that day? And what if your ruling is not unanimous? Eric Curtis Howard explores these implications. Well, we'll bring you those visuals uh, pretty shortly, but let's talk about Habitat Fair, which is uh, the 2013 edition of Multi TV's Habitat Fair. And it has opened with about 70 exhibitors ready to provide patrons with solutions to their housing needs. Now, this fair will also host the Energy Commission, which is to educate the public on appropriate wiring and energy conservation methods as a means of addressing the rampant fire outbreaks. And pretty shortly, uh, Abigail Adumanku Enchi, who is a joint news reporter, will join us with an update live from the first ground. So don't go away. But let's do something else that has got to do with buildings and appropriate wiring in our buildings has become a major concern to all due to the incessant fire outbreaks being recorded in the country lately, with most of them happening in the marketplaces. Now, many of these fires have largely been blamed on poor electrical wiring at these places and how some of them hang loosely in the opening, posing danger to occupants. So, why do we have this problem in the first place? And why do the professionals not ensure that the right things are done during construction of homes and public places? How do we correct the wrong and what should we do uh, when we are wiring? The expert, Echo DeGraff Johnson, who is a member of the Electrical Contractors Association of Ghana, uh, would be telling us pretty shortly. We understand that he's at the Habitat Fair, and so we'll join them pretty shortly. And um, we'll, we'll educate us proper on how to wire our homes and marketplaces. But you're watching the Midday Brief. When we come back, hopefully Habitat Fair will be ready, and then we'll take you live to the grounds. Right, and so let's go back to the early, earlier story where we've been talking about you know, the proper way of wiring our homes. Uh, Echo DeGraff Johnson is joining us by telephone. He's with the Electrical Wiring and Contractors Association. Hello, Echo. Hello. Now, why do we have this problem of electrical wires being, you know, perceived as the cause of fires recorded lately? Yeah. Uh, just me let him give advice to the mm. property developers and property owners. When your property is being developed, Please engage an electrical contractor who is duly registered with the Ghana Electrical Contractors Association. With that, we mean the contractor is aware of all the regulations and all the procedures and the consequences of his work if he fails to do the right thing. So that is the first advice we will give to the property owners and developers. Mm. Now, wiring. Wiring means connecting switches and lightning to a appropriate source of power right. to supply. And those materials that will carry the power to these areas, as I mentioned, is, are the cables. These cables are manufactured, and they are manufactured under license and standards and with specifications that go with electrical properties. So, like when we are buying cables in Ghana, we recommend you buy cables from Nixon Cables, Ray Roy, and Tropical Cables. These cables manufactured in Ghana, they satisfy the standards and mm. the property 
qualities of electricals. Right. So this is in this case, that's what we shall say to the property developers and owners. Mm. But Echo, we, we we can't look forward to the problem, you know, be, be becoming bigger than it already is, especially considering the the extremely tight measures that is being put together. For instance, we understand that in order for you to be certified as a, as a proper electrician, there is some sort of e exam you need to write besides the practical one you take. And, and, and the, question, the begging question has been that how many of these electricians who visit our homes can pick up the pen and paper and, and write a, 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 and pass an exam? I have already told you that as a property developer and property owner, when you are engaging any electrical contractor, mm. first of all, engage a contractor who's registered with Ghana Electrical Contractors Association. By that, he has satisfied the basic conditions and has done what it needs to do the electrical wiring. Mm. Anybody without that, you may have your doubt. Mm. The fact that you have done Electrical engineering at the university, at anywhere, doesn't give you the right to wire because you don't know anything about wiring. Mm. You must learn. And by learning, we mean by training. And this is why we are saying that you must be registered to the electrical contractor. By that, you will be trained and you go through an apprenticeship before mm. you become an electrical wiring electrician. Mm. So it's not a, a, a a matter of doing electrical engineering. No, you might have electrical engineering, but you haven't done electrical wiring. You haven't done electrical insulation. You haven't done the workshop practice. You haven't done things that are related to the wiring regulations mm. and the sort. Right. Now, how can we reverse the trend and perhaps deface non-professional in this practice? Yeah, uh, we are trying to put up a lot of training into in procedures mm. so that those that are currently in, in, in the system can upgrade themselves and then become a proper electrical electricians right so that they will join the proper stream of electrical contractors right uh thank you very much echo I also thank you very much. echo yeah. digraf Jones johnson is with the electrical wires and contractors association of ghana but today, Habitat 2013 fair opens in Accra, and we are crossing over live to the venue of the fair where my colleague Abigail Adumako Enchi is joining us with updates. Hello, Abigail. Yes, Kimini. Right, Ab Abigail, what can you tell us about the start of the fair? I, I, I am very expectant, and I, I wish I'd be there now, perhaps <laughs> doing the midday news from there. But t t tell me about the mood at the fair? Well, um, the, the fair is quite good out here. Uh, we have a number of patrons coming in already, even though the official opening is yet to take place. For as best as they are set, they have um, arranged their things and their stands have all the things that you, uh, patrons would need. Now, there are over 70 as best as already in and they're just waiting for the opening. And so they they can go ahead and have um, talks with the patrons. So it's, it's quite busy out here. They're just waiting for officials to declare the opening of the whole fair and mm. then would we'll move from there. Right, but I can say that as visitors are quite enthusiastic. Mm. Uh, they, they know that they are going to really provide a um, solution to the housing needs of patrons. Mm. They are very enthusiastic and they are giving off um, some discounts. They have special packages for patrons who will be coming in. So it's going to be a very packed three-day fair, I mm. must say. I, I, I want to be there more because of the discount, but tell me about you know, the, the, the exhibitors who are there. Who and who from the industry would we find that? Yes, we have... Um, Key players in the housing industry, we have those from the home and construction financing companies. We have real estate developers. We have hardware suppliers. We have home decorations and furnishing firms. 
We have those who can give electrical goods and home appliances. It that is goes on and on and on. About 70 exhibitors. And the interesting thing is that this whole fair started with only about 20, 20 exhibitors. And now, four years down the line, uh, it has increased to 70. That's quite yeah. interesting. The, 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 and, you that's, know, that's quite a jump in numbers. More exhibitors are opting to come in. And when you speak to the exhibitors, they talk of the outcome of the whole fair. Mm. And it's really been impactful. So they are very enthusiastic. Well, what will I find there if I come? I mean, if, 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 I, if I'd like to, you know, go into construction anytime soon, what would I find there when I come this year? Could you come again? I'm asking, what are the exhibitors offering? What would I find there when I come? Yes, um, exhibitors here are players in the housing industry. Mm. So we have those who can give you houses at very affordable prices. Now they are giving discounts, so you can imagine. You mean I can very, find very what affordable. We have um, those who can fix your doors, give you the keys, and those from Asa Abloy, they are good with doors, keys. We have those I who see. can um, give um, electrical appliances. Everything to do with the house, to, from from acquiring a house mm. to furnishing it to decoration, everything one would need. So it's a one-stop shop for people who would want to um, get houses, who would want to furnish their homes, decorate their homes, everything they would need for their homes. I, and I, I, the interesting bit is that mm. the Energy Commission is partnering the fair this time, and they are going to be educating patrons on energy consumption, how to wire your home, how to make sure that you don't do things that would set your house on fire. That's Absol very important absolutely. because very, we have very had important. rampant fire outbreaks recently and this is a way to educate the public on how to make sure that you keep your home safe from fires. So this um, Habitat Fair is quite significant and very timely i must say i i, I couldn't agree more because last year was big this year is going to be bigger as you already said 70 ex ex exhibitors at the place. Yeah. Let, let's talk about you know when when i i get to be there where can i park my cars can i move through <laughs> the exhibitors you know the space and tell me how comfortable it's going to be when i come there it's, it's, it's comfortable and um, everything is organized around here I should say that everything is comfortable. We have um, ushers who would usher you in, and if you want to locate a particular stand, we have people you can talk to, and they would take you there. We have people who are directing uh, the cars. And already, like I said, patrons are trooping in, and mm. because of the opening, uh, patrons are out waiting for the first to officially open so they can go Wait, in. Which will be at so what time? Management of multi TV waiting to open the fair officially. At what even though time? The That's are set and ready to uh, exhibit their products and services. Uh, at what so time? It's, it's quite interesting, Adia. You should be here yourself, can uh, we? I, I, I will be joining there. you immediately it's, it's after the news. Interesting, and I know that patrons who would be coming in today would get all they need for their housing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But at, at what time does the fair officially open? Could you come again, Kevin? At, at what time does the fair officially open? It opens at 6. 6 in the morning and, and it's, it's virtually the whole day, in the, from 6 to 6. Mm. Just so the, it's a, a whole day I see. A fair. Right. When you walk in, you can get anything you want for your housing needs. Yeah. So for, 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 the, for the purpose of education, today Abigail. Today till Sunday, I see. the fair is on. Right. Six to six, two out. And it, it's going to be amazing. Mm. For, for those who amazing. may not... From what for I those... see out here and from, from the products and services I'm seeing, mm. nobody who took in here would lack anything regarding housing. I, I can imagine already, but... For, for those who may not know where this is taking place, tell us where, how we can get there. Yes, so this is at the National Theatre. Mm. The National Theatre. 
just um, opposite City House. Mm. I see. The National Theatre is, is, is an, uh, <laughs> a landmark, so oh, I believe obviously, Ghanaians obviously. should be able to locate the National Theatre. And I will right be joining there. you pretty shortly, Abigail, right after the midday news. Thank you very much, Abigail. Abigail Aduma, who she joined us from the Habitat Fair, and you better be there or you miss out on all the mouse watching uh, packages we have but let's do some other stories now and government has been cataloging procedures it is using in selecting districts to benefit from the 200 senior high schools it promised during the 2012 electioneering campaign the construction of these schools forms part of government's effort to make education available to all Ghanaians. Government has indicated the first 50 of the schools will be built this year. The tax force put together to look at the implementation of the government's priority projects has already submitted a model of the schools they want to build to the president. Deputy Information Minister Mutala Mohammed at the Daily Media Briefing today said three main criteria will be used to identify the districts which will benefit. Uh, if you look at the 2013 budget, it is indicated that 50 of the schools will be executed this year. And uh, the schools have been identified, uh, the districts have been identified because selected districts are going to benefit the 50 for a start. Uh, there is a criteria for identification. The three main criteria that is used to identify the districts who will benefit from this one, I include one, the new districts without senior high schools. You know, most, some of the new districts that are created do not have senior high schools. That is the first criteria. The second one has to do with all districts without senior high schools. There are some existing districts that do not have senior high schools. And the third one are districts with senior high schools, but where the pressure is too much for the schools to contain. You can go to one district, we have about several junior high schools with one senior high school. And in that case, there will be so much pressure on the existing senior high school. That is the other criteria. Among them also include even some of the districts where the people are willing to support. Because clearly when they are providing such facilities, the communities or the districts should own them. So it is the responsibility of the communities themselves to support in terms of providing the adequate labor that, that will support, support in having the projects uh, being executed. So His Excellency the President has actually seen the designs, he has seen the districts that are selected, he has approved, and he has indeed instructed the Minister of Information to go ahead for the implementation. Uh, the Ministry having identified those districts, have also written to the districts for the acquisition of land for the schools to, to be built. Now, under the auspices of the Christian Council of Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference, Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, and uh, the, the National Association of Charismatic and Christian Churches, Multi-TV and the Graphic Communications Group will be holding a marathon prayer session to, for the Lord to heal our land. Multi-TV and Graphic Communications is, is encouraging you to join in the session that would be live on the Jesus Channel on Wednesday, 28th and Thursday, 29th August from 11 p.m. And then also the program is expected to be climaxed with a powerful 12-hour prayer session starting on Friday, 30th August, 2013 at the Accra Technical Training College, ATTC, Kokumlimli in Accra from 8 p.m. till 8 a.m. Make it a point to be part of this prayer on 2013. Let's do some other stories now. The Civil Society for Scaling Up Nutrition are calling for legislation that will ensure budgetary allocation to help implement the national nutrition policy. The policy aims to ensure optimal nutrition and good health for all persons living in Ghana by 2017. Three in ten women and eight in ten under five years of age children in Ghana suffer some form of undernutrition manifested in stunting, wasting, anemia and deficiencies in iron, iodine and vitamin A. Available statistics by the Ghana Health Service indicate 12,000 children die every year of underweight-related ailment due to malnutrition. As others battle with underweight, school-age children in urban dwellings are also growing increasingly overweight, with recent surveys putting the statistics between 10 to 15 percent. These school institutions, do they have playing fields for their children for physical activity? Children sit behind computers 
or television when they go home. Now we are not playing and pay, no skipping, no gata to gata, if you know these ones, when we used to play. Ghana, with its current nutritional situation, has developed a national nutrition policy which sets out processes to scale up nutrition. At the first civil society organization's dialogue on the national nutrition policy, the group noted without the appropriate legal framework to back the policy, little can be achieved. Uh, the appropriate legislation and making sure that we have legislation to back the policy to be able to be effective. Through that, we can transform institutions that have been established or that have been outlined in the policy into a more stronger forces of pushing nutrition agenda forward. Parliamentarians Against Hunger and Malnutrition Caucus at the consultative meeting agreed to give the policy the appropriate legislative framework to make its implementation effective. And we are not placing premium on our eating habits and we need to change it. What is happening to our dawadawas? What is happening to our precursors? What is happening to our dandelops? What is happening to our contemporaries? What is happening to our own local nutritious foods? The young people, the growing children from zero to six, what are we giving them? after breastfeeding. So this particular program, I think, would all ensure as soon as the bill is brought back in Parliament, would uh, all lobby, would um, speak to it, and they will make sure and hope that it will be passed very soon. Effective implementation of the policy would ensure the survival and improve the well-being of Ghanaians, particularly women and children, and also boost economic productivity. Let's stay on health, health and about 30 people suffering from cleft lip and palate have benefited from free surgery organized by the Ghana Cleft Foundation during an exercise which took place at the Afian Quanta Regional Hospital in the Western Region. A report by our regional correspondent William Benjamin Peters. Cleft lip and cleft palate, which can also occur together, are caused by abnormal facial development during gestation. A cleft is a fissure or opening, which is the non-fusion of the body's natural structure that form before birth. A cleft lip or palate can successfully be corrected with surgery, especially if conducted soon after birth or in early childhood. The average cost of a surgery for cleft and lip palate ranges between 500 to $1,000. The Ghana Cleft Foundation therefore organizes annual free surgeries for persons suffering from cleft and lip palate as a way of assistance. The exercise at the Ifian Kwanta Hospital in the Western Region saw nine males and 16 females, as well as babies, drawn from across the Western Region undergo successful surgery from the five day exercise conducted by two surgeons from the Konfuanochi Teaching Hospital at Kumasi. One of the beneficiaries preparing for his surgery, 15-year-old Isaac Itua from Sifirioso, was pleased with the gesture, believing he can live a normal life like any other person after the surgery. Some parents whose wards have undergone the surgery expressed their gratitude to the foundation. The leader of the surgeons from the Konfuanochi Teaching Hospital, Dr. Jikua Planjru, explains the importance of the exercise as well as some causes of cleft palate are born with it. Some of the things that we believe may be contributing to the cause, some of it is maternal malnutrition, when mothers lack certain nutrients when they are pregnant, particularly folic acid. Sometimes it's, it may be related to certain drugs that mothers take during pregnancy. Um, there's a drug that is called a steroid, which sometimes mothers take in pregnancy, which we believe may cause some of them. Some of them are also just in the family. So you may find that maybe a grandmother or a grandmother has it, and then the child is born with it. Um, so there are many possible causes. Sometimes we believe that even environmental Pollution, some things that are in the air, that are in the air that the mothers breathe when they are pregnant can damage the babies. So, so these, are, these are some of the possible causes of the defect. But as I said, they are born with it. It's not something that you get as you grow. Yeah. Now, the country's quest to raise funds for development through the issue in bonds has received massive interest from investors. The government of Ghana, through the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning, sold its first seven-year bond, and it was oversubscribed by 170%. Government received 270 million Ghana cities 
uh, as offers from local and foreign investors but took only 102 million of it. It would be paying those who participated in the bids and interest or a yield of 17.5 percent. Joy Business has guided that most of the bids that government is likely to accept are from local investors. Proceeds from the bond would be used to finance infrastructure projects and settle some maturing debts. Government is, however, expected to receive the money by next Monday. Some analysts say this would encourage some corporate institutions as well as government agencies like the VRA to issue long-term bonds to finance their operations. Also in business, mining firm Golden Star Wasa Limited has resettled over 750 inhabitants with 28, within 28 villages and hamlets that constitutes Tegbokrom and the Wasa East District of the Western Region. The resettlement package made up of 260 residential and communal structures on 96.4 acres of land is estimated at 23 million US dollars. They include social amenities such as early childhood development center, mechanized boreholes, markets playground, community center, ref refuse dump, and a street lighting system. The, result, the resettlement package was in compliance with the Minerals and Mining Regulations LI 2175 of 2012 that required a mineral rights holder to compensate and resettle affected persons on a mining concession. That's it for business. Let's do some foreign news now. And more than 300,000 people across Sudan have been affected by floods that have killed nearly 50 people in August. The World Health Organization has announced and it says the region around the capital Khartoum have been particularly badly hit and was experiencing the worst floods in 25 years. One of the major risks to health was the collapse of more than 53,000 latrines. And the, w the WHO added a UN official in Sudan described the situation as a huge disaster in a report and the World Health Organization said that 48 people had been killed and 70 injured in the flood. It therefore warned of increasing trends of malaria cases in the past two weeks. Meanwhile, Sudan Interior Minister Mohamed Mahmoud Ahmed puts the confirmed the toll at 53 according to the AFP news agency. That's it for the segment. After the break, Rashida Baba Kadiri. A very good afternoon to you. My name is Rashida Baba Kadiri. Now, uh, let's just go straight away to see what's happening in the transfer market in the European um, football, uh, in, in European football. Now, um, Gareth Bale, he's almost close to leaving Tottenham Hotspur. Who is going to take his place? Luis Suarez, uh, where is he going? Is he indeed leaving Liverpool at all? And what is Aston Wenger doing about needing numbers to beef up his squad at, for this season? So, you for Champions League and also Barclays Premier League. Transfer market updates up next. Reportedly made a £40 million bid for Real Madrid's Karim Benzema. Having already failed with bids for Gonzalo Higuain, who eventually joined Napoli, and Liverpool's Luis Suarez, Gunners boss Arsene Wenger remains determined to add an established striker to his squad. Wenger has tracked Benzema for many years, but there's now a feeling that a big offer could succeed as Madrid seek to balance their finances in the expectation of a world record fee to recruit Gareth Bale. It could also suit Benzema as he would be able to link up with his international teammate Olivier Giroud. Arsenal have reportedly also shown interest in Angel Di Maria, while Wenger is still working on deals for a goalkeeper and at least one midfielder. The Gareth Bale transfer saga could soon be drawing to a close with the Tottenham Hotspur forwards proposed move to Real Madrid imminent. The transfer yet to be agreed, but it could happen in the coming days, and is set to eclipse the £18 million world record fee rail paid Manchester United for Cristiano Ronaldo in 2009. Bale has constantly been linked with a move to the Bernabeu during the transfer window, although Spurs manager Andre Villas-Boas has the night claims a deal is done. The contract is yet to be signed, but it is believed that talks have advanced between the two clubs. 
The number 11 shirt, which the 24-year-old wears for Tottenham, has been left vacant at Real Madrid in the expectation their new world record signing will take it on his arrival. Gearing up for Bale's possible departure, Tottenham have spent £60 million to bring four new signings to White Hart Lane, including a club record £26 million on Valencia striker Roberto Soldado. Bale missed most of Tottenham's pre-season programme and their Premier League opener at Crystal Palace on Sunday because of a foot injury. And the Wales international will play no part in the first leg of Spurs' Europa League playoff tonight. Right, so there's seven days to the end of the summer transfer window and let's see what's going to happen in the coming days. Now, away from that, let's check out the fixtures for the various leagues coming up this weekend. Let's begin first with the Barclays Premier League in England and uh, let's see the fixtures that are upcoming. Fulham. They take on Arsenal. Derek Barting, the Ghanaian interest in Fulham versus Arsenal. Let's see what happens if he would warm up to the EPL. There's Everton taking on West Bromwich Albion. Hull City are taking on Norwich City. West Ham United, they go to Newcastle United. Southampton, they will host Sunderland United, uh, Sunderland FC. And then Crystal Palace go to Stoke City. Liverpool go to the Villa Park to play Aston Villa. And then Manchester City, they go to Cardiff City. And then Tottenham Hotspur, they host Swansea. City and uh, be uh, get ready for that game on Joy Sports on on uh, Joy 99.7 FM on the Sports Arena on Sunday. We have full commentary of that game between Tottenham Hotspur and Swansea City. We begin at three, so do make a date with us. Let's go now to Spain to find out the Spanish La Liga fixtures for this weekend. Week uh, three. Hetafe up against Almeria, Athletic Bilbao up against Osasuna, Dels Eche up against Real Sociedad, Espanyol they take on Valencia, Real Valladolid they travel to Villa Real and Rayo Vallecano also go to Atletico Madrid, Sevilla FC are going away to Levante, Barcelona they will be hosted by Malaga, Celta Vigo travel to Real Betis and then um, there's Real Madrid also uh, in action there this weekend. Now, the German Bundesliga will see Borussia Dortmund up against Werder Bremen, Bayer Leverkusen up against Borussia, Munchen Gladbach, Bayern München, they host Nuremberg, Hannover Zetschu Neuntisch, they host Schalke and Jufia, and then VF, uh, VfL Wolfsburg, they travel to Mainz, TSG Hoffenheim, they take on FC Freiburg, Hertha Berlin, they host Hamburg SV, TSV A Braunschweig, they take on Eintracht Frankfurt, and then we see FC uh, Augsburg up against VfB Stuttgart. Now the Italian Serie A is in action this weekend, and they take uh, they play their first league matches this weekend. Quickly, let's see what's going to be happening in the Italian Serie A for this weekend. And uh, of course, uh, Suleiman Sarri and um, Kevin Prince Boateng will be waiting to see them in action for AC Milan. So uh, we'll just uh, bring you details of um, the fixtures for the Italian Serie A: Hellas um, Verona up against AC Milan, Sampdoria versus Juventus, Internacional Inter Milan up against. Gen Cagliari up against Atalanta, Lazio up against Udinese, Livorno up against AS Roma, Napoli, Bologna, Parma up against uh, Kevo Verona, Torino up against Sassuolo, and then Fiorentina up against Catania. Right, so those are the pictures coming up this weekend. Join us on Monday as we bring you all the reviews of all the leagues that will be played this weekend. My name is Rashida Baba Kadiri. Remember that Sports on Midday Brief is proudly sponsored by Tigo. Smell, you've got Tigo. You're welcome back. Let's do some mass and entertainment news. Now, renowned Ghanaian playwright Uncle Ibo White has added his voice to the peace campaign preceding the election petition verdict, encouraging Ghanaians to respect the peace the country is enjoying. The playwright could not resist sharing some of his favorite quotes from the hearing, including, Do you know, do you now know your true size? I'm not telling you, so how do you expect to get a man with this behavior of yours? When you say get a man, do you mean a boyfriend, a husband, or a husband friend? I mean a man to marry. But hey. so when you say marry, do you mean customary marriage? Marriage or not? No. Oh, it's not a marriage. Not, do you do this to everyone? And when you say, oh, I'm going to the renowned playwright Uncle Lebo White, who is noted for his hilarious plays like What Is My Name, Apartment N1, and a host of others, says Ghana must be put first and we all must uphold the peace the country has been blessed with. As Ghanaians, we have nowhere going if we should lose the peace. We need to remind ourselves that four years come quickly. You understand? Instead of, no, yeah, and Penny, we, we take to the streets and things like that. The countries where they've taken to the streets to come to, um, come, um, protest election results. Four years come and pass and they are still in the bushes fighting. Whereas within that time you could have changed 
the, the situation. Also noted for his witty ways of inculcating realities of life into his play, Ank Lebo says after it has all calmed down, he might come up with a play that will play around with some of the judicial terms that have gained popularity during the hearing. This leads us to find out about his favorite election petition terms. <laughs> no, my favorite term is, um, 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 I see my size. <laughs> I, I love that one. I now see my size. <laughs> and my, my favorite um, question from um, Justice Atukuba is, um, have you seen? Have you seen that going to go, go to court, go to court is not easy. <laughs> Uncle Apple finally leaves us with a peace message. Politicians will come and go. Parties will come and go. This nation is all we have. I have a saying that we are surrounded. We are like an island of English-speaking people in an ocean of francophone countries. Um, be, to our, our west, our east, to our north, our francophone. I indeed, I believe that even to our south, the fish in the ocean, they speak French. So, Ghanaians, when there's fire here, we would have nowhere to go. Right. Now we, we move on with some other story. Well, that's it for the Zara. My name is Kimini Nyamani Amano. A recap of our headlines. And please deploy 400 personnel and nine commanders to all 10 regions of the country ahead of the Supreme Court's verdict. Also, Multi TV's 2013 Habitat Fair opens today with emphasis on proper wiring and energy conservation. National Chairman of the NDC reviews the winner-takes-all culture in the country's politics column for the sharing of power. Have a lovely re weekend. Be responsible. There's more news on myjournalite.com.